Well, hey, everybody. Merry Christmas. This is Heidi St. John. You have found me here at the intersection of faith and culture on a very special day. Sailor and I are recording today, my daughter, and it is Christmas Eve here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, and we have come to the studio to read a Christmas story. And so I think you guys are going to love this. If you've got kids, gather around. We're going to read a book today. It's called The Carpenter's Gift. I'm glad you guys are here. Merry Christmas. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. So Merry Christmas Eve. Hi, Sailor. Hi, Merry Christmas. I'm so glad that you're Is this the first time you've been on my show by yourself? I think so. I think it is. Yeah. So we are very excited to be doing this together, Sailor and I. And we have a long tradition in our family of collecting Christmas books. How many? I think I I should have counted. How many books do we have? That's a lot. Uh, Like one gigantic box that is underneath the tree. (laughs) So we have have a lot of Christmas books. We like to put them out uh, around the house for the kids and the grandkids to read. And this year we got a bunch of books sent to us by my friends at Big Sky. And and so Sailor and I have been reading through them and we picked our favorite one to read to you. Actually, uh, I think we agreed. We didn't even disagree. We agreed on the favorite one. And tell us a little bit about the book. Well, uh, well, I don't want to spoil it, but um it's really sweet like I just I don't know it's just really sweet it's like a very Christmassy Christmas book (laughs) why why did um why did this book jump out at you of all the books we read because we read quite and they actually read a lot of really good books this year but we both liked this one and I think for me it was because of the it, it evokes emotion like you, you really can get into. I the like story. the history of it. I yeah, mean, yeah. What's the book about? I can't spoil it. No, oh, she's not going to spoil it. All right. Are you ready to read? Yes, ma'am. All right, let's do it. Nearly a lifetime had passed, but Henry could still remember what it felt like to wake up in the old shack, especially during winter time. In those days, the Great Depression gripped the country, and like many people, Henry's parents were out of work. They couldn't afford coal for the stove or warm blankets for the beds, so young Henry usually woke up with a shiver, but he didn't complain because it was nobody's fault. Instead, he visited warm places in his mind. One day in 1931, actually the day before Christmas, just like now, Mm -hmm. Henry was reading a book when he heard the loud toot-toot of a car horn. He opened the front door and saw his father behind the wheel of a borrowed truck. Go for a ride, Sparky? His father shouted over the rumbling engine. You bet! Henry shouted back and raised inside to get his coat. Riding in any sort of car was a special treat for Henry not to be missed. Soon he was sitting beside his father, nose pressed to the window glass. They drove into a nearby grove of evergreens. Henry breathed in the strong, familiar smell. Here's the plan, Henry's father said. See those spruce trees, Sparky? We're going to cut them down and take them to the city. Why, Henry asked. To sell them as Christmas trees, his father said. Even though New York City was just an hour's drive away, Henry had never been there before. He shivered with excitement as the thought of seeing all those tall buildings scraping the sky. Those are big trees. Yeah. They're really, really pretty pictures, too. When Henry and his father reached Midtown Manhattan, they began looking for a place to park and unload. Driving down Fifth Avenue, they found a good spot next to a construction site. Mind if I set up here? Henry's father asked a worker. The man looked them over. It didn't take him long to figure out that Henry's father was down on his luck. No problem, said the man. I'll give you a hand. My name's Frank. Then he turned around and called out, Hey, Mikey, Polly, help me out over here. By the end of the afternoon, Henry and his father sold trees to passersby. By the end of the day, they had earned enough money to make the trip a success. We should be getting home now, Henry's father said, as the sun set behind a tall building. What about the rest of the trees? Henry asked. I thought we'd give them to Frank and the other fellows. Henry nodded in agreement. The best presents are the ones you don't expect. Because it was Christmas Eve, the workers were having a little party. Frank and the others took the tallest one of the trees that Henry and his father had given them and decorated it with whatever they could cobble together. Paper, garlands, cranberries threaded onto strings, and even a few shiny, shiny tin 
and even a few shiny tin cans. Henry added an ornament of his own, made of newspaper that he folded into a star. In the background, he could hear his father talking with Frank about grown-up things. The hard times for Henry's family, the shack in which they lived, but Henry didn't want to think about those things. He just wanted to look at the most marvelous Christmas tree he had ever seen. It had been the best day Henry could remember, and he didn't want it to end. He stood before the decorated tree, enchanted. The street lamps had just come on, and the tin cans glittered in their light. If ever there was a magic moment, Henry thought, this is it. He decided to make a special Christmas wish. He wished that one day his family would live in a nice, warm house. After making his wish, Henry opened his eyes. His gaze fell on a pine cone lying on the ground. He picked it up and was turning it over in his hands when he felt his father's grip on his shoulder. Time to go, Sparky, his father said. Henry stuffed the pine cone in his pocket, said goodnight to the workers, and walked with his father back to the truck. By the time they arrived home, it was well past Henry's bedtime. You must be exhausted, his mother said, slipping off his boots, straight to bed with you. Shrugging off his coat, Henry felt a bulge in his pocket. It was the pine cone. He took it out and looked at it, remembering the joys of the day and the magic of the tree. The next morning, Henry's parents let him sleep in late. In fact, it was well past eight when a toot-toot of several car horns were woke him up. Rushing to the window, he saw three trucks pulling up outside. All were loaded with lumber and other building supplies. At the wheel of the first truck was Frank, and behind him were other Rockefeller Center workers. What were they doing so far from the city on Christmas morning? Frank got out of the truck. After you left, we got thinking, he said. There was all this extra wood lying around and we had the day off, so we thought we'd drive up to see what we could do to help you with this house of yours. Frank looked at the shack, taking in its patched walls and ill-fitting windows. I think we'll have to make a fresh start, he said. Henry's father didn't have words for the way he felt, so he simply took Frank's hand and shook it. The sound of sawing and hammering traveled far enough that Christmas morning for Henry's neighbors to wonder what was going on. A few walked over, saw the house going up, and spread the word. By mid-afternoon, a dozen more people were pitching in. As the new house took shape, Frank called Henry over. See those boards, he said, pointing at a stack of cedar. We're going to use them to trim the windows, but they've got nails in them. I need you to pull the nails out. Henry moved to fetch the boards, but Frank called him back. Digging into his toolbox, he handed Henry an old claw hammer. You'll be needing this, Frank said. By nightfall, the frame of the new house was nearly done. By week's end, it had a roof. Soon enough, it was ready for Henry and his family to move in. In the spring, Henry's parents celebrated with potluck dinner. They invited everyone who helped build the house. Henry was glad to see Frank again. He was ready to return the claw hammer, but Frank wouldn't take it. You keep it, son, he said. It might come in handy someday. After dinner, Henry sat happily in his very own room. He thought about his Christmas wish and couldn't believe it had actually come true. He knew he should do something special to express how thankful he was, and he thought long and hard about what that might be. Finally, he decided to plant the pine cone. Maybe he could be Jack from the Beanstalk, and the pine cone would be his magic bean. Henry planted the pine cone beside the new house. In time, a seedling emerged. Henry watered and weeded it. As time passed, both he and the tree grew tall and strong. Henry especially liked to hammer away in its shade, and he became quite a good carpenter, building many projects with his skilled hands. As Henry grew up, however, he became busy with other things. He got married, moved away, and had a family. Most summers, though, he returned to visit his parents. On lazy days, he sat beneath the tree with his son, teaching him how to build things with the old claw hammer. As he got even older, Henry sometimes wondered where the time went. One day, he was a young boy, waking up with a shiver. The next, he was an old man, living alone, not needing a big place anymore. He decided to move back into the house where he had grown up. 
To keep himself busy, Henry began working on the house, which was showing its age. He especially liked using the old claw hammer. Its polished handle, smooth and dark from wear, felt comfortable in his hand. One day, as Henry worked on the front porch, a man drove up to see him. The man told Henry that he worked for Rockefeller Center and that it was his job to pick out the new Christmas tree each year. I just love your spruce, the man said. When I saw it from my helicopter yesterday, I knew it had to be this year's tree. Henry wasn't sure what to do. He knew that being asked was an honor, but he and that tree had been together a long time, and he was reluctant to let it go. Now I know I'm asking a lot, the man said, but if you agree, I can promise that your tree will bring joy to millions of people. Henry thought some more. And when the holiday season is over, the man continued, we will mow the tree and use the lumber to help a family in need build a new house. A family in need? Suddenly, Henry felt a shiver and the calendar in his mind flipped back to 1931. Driving to New York City with his father, meeting Frank and the other workers, building the house, planting the tree, he knew what he had to do. I've been given so much, Henry said. I want to give something back. The tree is yours. Just before Thanksgiving, Henry received an invitation to the tree lighting. On the special day, a car picked him up and drove him all the way to Rockefeller Center, where he had met the family whose new home would be built. They hugged him and thanked him many times for his generosity. Afterwards, Henry stood off to the side and watched the family's young daughter. It's so beautiful, the girl said softly as she stared at the enormous tree. Then something caught her the child's eye. The pinecone had fallen on the ground. Picking it up, she turned it over in her hand before stuffing it into her pocket. If there was ever a magic moment, Henry thought, this is it. Henry walked over to the girl and they stood together, gazing at the glittering tree. Then... Henry reached into his coat pocket and pulled out the old claw hammer. Here you go, Sparky, Henry said. You'll be needing this. Beautiful. I agree. This is such a good book. Yeah, the illustrations in it are really amazing. I love how he called her Sparky. I thought that was so sweet Mm -hmm. because his dad used to call him Sparky. Yeah. And I love that he knew as soon as he heard that the lumber was going to go to a family in need, he knew that this was a way for him him to give back. Yeah. There's also really Im- interesting information in the back of this book about the tree at Rockefeller Center. And I hope you guys get the opportunity to pick this up. You can get it anywhere books are sold. But I really would encourage you to go through our friends at Big Sky Books because, first of all, they're doing really awesome things trying to get really vetted books into the hands of families. Uh, and second of all, it's just a way to support another uh, small business. So I love that. Beautiful, beautiful illustrations. But there's definitely information in the back of the tree. They talk about Habitat for Humanity and what they do with that to help people in need. But then they talk about how the Christmas tree at Rockefeller Center came to be. So really, really spectacular. Sailor, I know you've been to New York City with me, but you've never been there at Christmas, have you? I don't think so. All right. Well, we're going to have to fix that at some point. Maybe look at the tree in the back. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. That almost looks like a tree from the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, it kind of does. Yeah, it does. I wonder if they look in the Pacific Northwest for the trees over there. They have, I've heard. Really? Mm -hmm. I've Mm -hmm. heard that they have. Well, uh, we are, it's Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. Actually, by the time everybody hears this, it's going to be Christmas Day. I'm so excited. (laughs) So we are, we're having some, we're having some fun at our house. We're going to be having your, a couple of your uh, brother, your brother and his wife and your sister and husband spend the night at our house Mm -hmm. on Christmas Eve. Well, and then all of my siblings will turn over. Yes. Yep. And we're going to go down to Candy Cane Lane and look at Christmas lights. Then we're going to the candlelight service where Mm -hmm. dad's playing on the worship team. So we had a lot going on. We made stuff this year too. We made candles for days, beeswax candles. And so every year we we like to, our family goes around and we give them to our neighbors and we say hi to everybody. Well, normally we give them something for you know, we will like bake cookies, or, but mm-hmm. this year we did candles. candles. Yeah, I kind of like it. Yeah, I'm liking the candle thing. Oh, beeswax candle never hurts on a gloomy day. So anyway, that's our little Christmas special, Sailor. Thank you for joining me. It was so much fun to thank have you, you in the studio. Me. I love you. I love you too. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Mom. Merry Christmas to all of you guys. Thank you so much for listening to the show. We uh, so appreciate it. 
And as the year draws to a close, I think even more appreciative uh, because we just know that you guys have other things to do. You could be listening to something else, but you've taken time. I hope this, I hope this uh, has really blessed you. And again, the name of the book is The Carpenter's Gift, A Christmas Tale About the Rockefeller Center Tree. Have a Merry Christmas, you guys. Have a great day. Love your people well. And we will see you right back here again at the intersection of faith and culture. I don't keep that right. <laughs>